The Peacekeeper, originally codenamed MX, is the largest and newest ICBM to enter U.S. Air Force service. It incorporates the latest technology in missile control and navigation systems to achieve incredible reliability and accuracy. The Peacekeeper's intricate guidance system is so sensitive it must be assembled under carefully controlled conditions. As we see here, the guidance system is built in a special facility called a clean room. The peacekeepers were originally intended to be mobile, to remain survivable by moving on trains that would be nearly impossible for an enemy to continuously locate. Political controversy over the basing mode put the rail mobile concept in limbo, and the peacekeepers were deployed in traditional silos instead. The Peacekeeper missile is, the, um, is a completely different missile than the Minuteman missile. It's uh, 71 feet in length. It weighs approximately 195,000 pounds. It is um, approximately 90 inches in diameter. And the uh, missile is a cold launch missile as opposed to a hot launch missile uh, that a Minuteman is. The Peacekeeper missile is ejected from the silo using a steam generating process. Once it is approximately 150 to 200 feet above the surface of the ground, then the engines of the missile ignite. The Peacekeeper does have 10 independently retargeted vehicles as opposed to three for the Minuteman 3. The rail mobile Peacekeeper remains a model for future ballistic missile deployments. Another approach for mobile survivability is the small ICBM commonly called the Midget Man. It is towed behind an all-terrain wheeled tractor and can roam the plains of the central and western United States during times of crisis to prevent its detection and attack by enemy forces. The weapon is much smaller than the Peacekeeper and so easier to transport. It carries only a single nuclear warhead compared to the Peacekeeper's ten MIRV. The enormous destructive power of strategic ballistic missiles means that exceptional steps must be taken to ensure that they are not accidentally launched. It is the task of the men and women of the United States Air Force's strategic missile wings to make certain that these vital deterrent weapons are ready at a moment's notice, but only after the proper instructions from the highest command authorities. The uh, SAC has intercontinental ballistic missile wing today. Uh, two wings located in North Dakota, that's at Minot Air Force Base and Grand Forks Air Force Base. Uh, one wing in Montana, that's Malmstrom Air Force Base. One wing in South Dakota, Ellsworth Air Force Base. One wing in Missouri, that's Whiteman Air Force Base. And our wing here in Wyoming, uh, FE-1 Air Force Base. Uh, together, uh, they bring 1,000 ICBMs to SAC's nuclear deterrent fort. The 90th Strategic Missile Wing at F.E. Warren Air Force Base in Cheyenne is responsible for 200 of those missiles, scattered at sites covering 12,600 square miles in Colorado, Nebraska, and Wyoming. The uh, wing here at F.E. Warren Air Force Base has the same mission as any of the other five missile wings, which is to uh, maintain on alert a certain number of intercontinental ballistic missiles and have uh, launch crews trained and ready to launch those missiles if told to do so by the President of the United States. And here at F.E. Warren Air Force Base, we are in control of 200 intercontinental ballistic missiles. We have 150 Minuteman III and 50 Peacekeeper missiles. We're the only missile wing that has the Peacekeeper missile today. It's our responsibility to put those missiles on alert in their silos. It's our responsibility to train people to man the launch control centers. It's our responsibility to train people to go out and keep our missile field secure. Uh, and it's our responsibility to provide all the support uh, services people need to carry out that mission. 
Keeping the ICBMs on alert is the responsibility of the men and women of the Wing Operations Staff and the four assigned squadrons. Each squadron is comprised of 50 missiles. Uh, 50 missiles then are controlled by five capsules. Each launch control center or capsule uh, is manned by a two-man crew, and this two-man crew has primary responsibility for 10 ICBMs within its flight. A crew can at any time assume command or control of additional missiles uh, in flights of 10, so it is conceivable that one crew would be monitoring the status of the entire squadron of 50 missiles. One of the 90th Strategic Missile Wing subordinate units is the 400th Strategic Missile Squadron, the only squadron equipped with the new Peacekeeper missile. The squadron consists of 60 to 65 officers. Most of them are lieutenants and uh, junior captains. They uh, average 22 to 23 years of age. Missileers are assigned to units from, of course, the three commission commissioning sources that we have, the Air Force Academy, Air Force ROTC, and Officer Training School. They're assigned to missile duties, and once they are assigned to missile duties, attend the 4315th Combat Crew Training School at Vandenberg Air Force Base in California, a SAC-owned and run school. There, for 14 weeks, they undergo a rigorous curriculum of training to include weapon system training, actually going through checklists that are necessary to, in, a, in order to operate the weapon system, as well as a very uh, intense program of emergency war order or EWO procedures, ensuring that they in fact understand their primary mission while they are on crew. After the 14 week period of time, they undergo a very demanding evaluation in a missile procedures trainer or simulator. They are evaluated as to how well they do in such areas as simulated fires, power losses, uh, communications degradations, or problems that they might experience, as well as an evaluation of their emergency war order procedure capability. Once they uh, complete that evaluation, they are assigned to the wings. They come here and for 30 days we give them additional training. This includes again weapon system training as well as emergency war order training. Just to make sure that they under understand our local procedures as well as to ensure to ourselves that they are ready to pull combat alert. Pulling alert means responsibility for 10 enormously destructive nuclear armed missiles. These young officers perform their duties in a command center buried deep underground. Just two officers man each of these launch control facilities. The newer member of the team serves as the deputy flight commander. The primary duty of the deputy is to provide support to the commander. The commander is the uh, sole person that makes, the, that makes the decision. However, the deputy is very, very vital in that if there was a critical decision to be, to be made, between the two of us, only, only the two of us make this decision, I would provide him with the inputs that I have, the information that I have to make that decision. The final decision, however, is his, but he leans very heavily on the deputy to help him make that decision. And uh, in addition to that, the deputy is also considered the uh, communications expert. After two years of duty serving as the deputy, young missileers go through another training program to become a flight commander the officer in overall charge of the Launch Command Center. The commander is responsible for all activities on the launch control facility itself, that is the security police top side that is there to respond to security situation. He's responsible for all actions that are done in accordance with technical orders. If you do them, they have to be done right. If they're not done right, the commander is the one responsible for those actions. There are 10 launch facilities within a flight. The commander of that Launch Control Center is in charge of that flight. That is all of the day-to-day -day security and maintenance of activities that go on. He is there to ensure that it is done properly and correct in accordance with SAC directives. Responsibility is the key to command, and when you're there, you're in charge. Standing alert means long days. The control centers are widely dispersed across the prairies. A day you're going on alert starts pretty early in the morning. As a deputy, I'm responsible for, pick, for picking up the vehicle that the commander and I uh, ride out to the site in. Uh, I would pick that vehicle up about 0700 in the morning. At 0715, my commander and myself would get together with the rest of the squadron crews going on alert that day. We had a uh, pre-departure briefing with the squadron. Then at 0730, we have a pre-departure briefing 
with the rest of the squadron going on alert. The entire wing gets together, 20 crews. Rotary response conditions are green and warm throughout the wing. Weather will be briefed by Staff Sergeant Daly. Maintenance will be briefed by Tech Sergeant Smith. And Tom will be briefed by Senior Airman Cardwell. Following the morning briefing, conducted without fail every day of the year, an alert crew can spend up to three hours driving to its launch control facility. There, the incoming crew receives a status report from the facility's security personnel. We have no LF checks to do in the flight area today. We're in low condition green, response condition one. Got any SAMs this morning? Not this morning. I guess we'll get some later. Then. We're ready to go down soon. Ready, sir? Echo, Foxtrot, Gulf Echo, Bravo, Bravo. Thank you. Downstairs means the control center. Over 50 feet below the ground in a reinforced steel and concrete capsule hardened to withstand nuclear attack. The launch control center, occupied by the two officers, is located behind enormous blast doors. The control area is completely sealed off from other elements of the launch facility. The crew's first task is to carefully check emergency and life support equipment that may have to be used if their launch control center comes under attack. They are then admitted into the actual nerve center of the missile launch facility by the previous crew who they will replace. The Launch Control Center, or LCC, is contained within yet another concrete-hardened capsule. Once inside the LCC, the new crew is briefed on the status of the missiles. After inspecting the center, they place their own locks on the safe, which contains the vital keys that are necessary to launch the ICBMs. Every procedure is carefully controlled by SAC's rules to ensure that unauthorized launch cannot take place. Day to day when a troop assumes alert at a launch facility, turning keys, that is launching missiles, is not the primary job day to day. It's monitoring the status of those missiles so that in the event those are required, that is an actual launch, that those missiles will respond accordingly. Missiles break, they must be fixed. So maintenance is a big part of our job. Inside the missile silos themselves, maintenance technicians support the launch crew to keep all the missiles at a high state of readiness all the time. These uh, folks are, tend to be oh, 20 to 21 years of age, first termers in the Air Force, many of them are, and uh, a great deal of responsibility and authority is given them, to them to ensure that they do the job right. And um, I think they do a very fine job based on the fact that our, our sorties stay on alert. Hey, Maintenance does a tremendous job in, in providing us missiles that are ready to go at a moment's notice. The enormous destructive power of these ballistic missiles demands the utmost care and dedication in the handling of these systems. That's what the American public demands, and that's what these people deliver. When you're dealing with nuclear weapons, it can't be any other way. The main responsibility for the enormously destructive weapons in these silos falls on the two officers who control the weapons. Can the young men and women who wear the title of Missilea accept that responsibility? Can they launch nuclear weapons if they are ordered to do so? I have no doubt that uh, 
I would think about what's happening topside if, in fact, it ever did happen, but I'm certain that all of the crew members would be able to do the job. Paradoxically, nuclear missiles are the only weapons whose success depends on never being used. To this day, peace between the superpowers has been maintained by a balance of terror posed by the ballistic missile. Keeper is a four-stage intercontinental ballistic missile produced by Boeing Aerospace and Electronics. Peacekeeper is designed to deliver 10 re-entry vehicles to independent targets at a nominal range of 5,000 miles. Formerly known as the MX missile, Peacekeeper is a vital addition to the Minuteman ICBM system and was originally developed to offset the continuous buildup of Soviet strategic weapons capability. Three of Peacekeeper's four stages use solid propellant materials. Hydraulically operated thrust vector actuators move nozzles to guide the missile along its flight path. In the fourth stage, the post-boost vehicle uses a liquid bi-propellant rocket propulsion system that provides velocity and altitude correction for the final phase of flight. The post-boost vehicle maneuvers each time a re-entry vehicle is released. The re-entry vehicles contain the missile's nuclear warheads. They are conically shaped and covered with ablative material to protect the weapons during re-entry into the atmosphere. Each re-entry vehicle is deployed at a position that will allow it to follow a ballistic path to its target.